The winners of the Nobel Prize in Physics for 2023 were announced recently. Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Krauss and Anne Luyer have been awarded the prestigious prize for experimental methods that generate attosecond pulses of light for the study of electron dynamics in matter. So let's talk a bit about what that actually means. Hi there, my name is Bart and I make fun physics videos on this channel. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more content just like this. Let's get into it. This year, the Nobel Committee has chosen to award the prize equally to three experimental physicists. Also, Anne Luyer is only the fifth woman to win the physics prize. These three scientists have all done important work in being able to create what are essentially very, very short pulses of laser light on the order of attoseconds, or 10 to the power of minus 18 seconds. You can't just create them by switching the laser on and off very quickly, because physically we can't do that fast enough. Instead, a really clever technique based on the interference of waves is used. Basically, when two waves of the same kind pass through the same space at the same time, they combine together, or interfere. At each point, we can just add the amplitudes of the waves being combined to find the amplitude of the resulting wave. And if you add together waves that have slightly different wavelengths to each other, they interfere to give these weird resulting wave shapes. But interestingly, if you add together waves that have evenly spaced frequencies, then you can create resulting waves that look like pulses. Remember, frequency is just a measure of how many complete cycles of each wave there are passing a point per second. So this wave, let's say, has a frequency of 1000 Hertz. That's 1000 cycles per second. This wave has a slightly higher frequency, let's say 1010 Hertz. So there are more cycles of this wave passing a point in space every second, which is why the wave looks more squished in this direction. And this third wave is 990 Hertz, so fewer cycles per second. Notice that the gap in frequency is 10 Hertz in each case. They're evenly spaced in the frequency domain. The end result is a wave that's basically made up of tiny little pulses of light, if we were to add these three waves together. Now the amplitudes or heights of the waves in this case aren't super important to us. All we need to know is that specific amplitudes work to give us specific kinds of pulses. But we also need to make sure that the phase relationship is right. If just one of the waves that we were adding is off slightly to the left or right, then the resulting wave wouldn't look like the pulses that we need. Now, everything we've discussed so far isn't brand new physics. The work that our three Nobel laureates did was in trying to reduce the width of these pulses so that they were on the order of attoseconds. When lasers were first invented, scientists very quickly developed methods to create pulses that were on the order of microseconds. And this quickly progressed to nanoseconds. In other words, pulses thousands of times narrower than before were being created fairly quickly as our knowledge of lasers grew. But as time passed, it's gotten harder and harder to get shorter and shorter pulses. Scientists manages to get down to the femtosecond level, but more and more limits were being reached, both in the physics of what was possible using known methods, as well as our understanding of the physics in the first place. To create narrower and narrower pulses, we have to add together more and more frequencies. This way, there are more bits of wave to interfere and the small amplitude regions get wider, meaning the pulses get narrower. All of these waves also have to have the right phase and amplitudes to get us reliable pulses rather than waves of random nonsense. So producing these many frequencies at the right amplitudes and phases has basically been the limiting factor. Eventually, scientists realized that shooting a pulsed laser with fairly wide pulses into some specific rare gases resulted in higher order harmonic frequencies being generated. At the time, we didn't know why this happened, nor if this could be used to create even shorter pulses, because it wasn't known if the harmonics would have the right phases to do this even if we combined them all together. Our Nobel laureates worked on fixing these phase relationships and showing that these pulses could indeed be created through higher harmonic generation, as well as some other exciting methods. So what can these attosecond pulses actually be used for? Well, one use is outlined in the Nobel Committee's description of why these scientists won the award in the first place. The pulses can be used for the study of electron dynamics in matter. Usually, our method of measuring anything on a small scale is to fire light photons at it, measure the photons that bounce off, and then deduce what was happening with the particles we were measuring. This is a slight oversimplification, but captures the gist of the idea. 
The trouble is that within atoms, electrons move around very, very quickly. Too quickly for even our femtosecond pulses to give us an accurate picture. For example, if in an atom an inner shell electron is ejected, this leaves behind what is known as a hole. Now this hole is an energy gap that can be filled by a higher shell electron, but then that electron leaves behind a hole in its place, and so on. It's also possible that all the electrons somehow rearrange themselves. We don't, we don't really know, because like I said, all of this happens very, very quickly. We need attosecond pulses to give us enough information about what's happening on this scale. So, our three Nobel Prize winners worked on and around showing that attosecond pulses of light could in fact be produced reliably. This is all fairly cutting-edge science, so it's cool to see Nobel Prizes being awarded not very long after new physics is discovered. And with all of that being said, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit that bell button for more fun physics content. A huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons and all the others over on my Patreon page. That'll be linked in the description if you'd like to support me on there. And finally, please do also check out my merch. It'll be linked in the description box below as well. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. That's all from me. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.